This right here is what Tango Tech built on the Hermitcraft server for his game decked out for his players to be able to submit artifact card sets or to bid on auction items. The way this system works is the player will put in their emeralds if they want to bid on an item or what they'll do is they'll put their four cards from their artifact set in this barrel. Once they click on this button, the redstone lamp will stay on saying that there's items that they bid on or that they submitted as a set of cards. Um, but the way this system works, and Tango Tech also did acknowledge that there's a flaw to his system, is that it uses a despawn timer that locks the system up for a period of time. So let me show you what I mean by that. It uses observers to detect when items flow through this hopper, and then it spits out two items onto this pressure plate. The issue I've noticed with this is, let's say these items despawned, like so. And now the system is primed, ready for, for someone to be able to submit more items. But the issue is, because this is locked currently, there's items in the system um, in their bottom barrel, it won't let them submit more. And the other issue too is, if Tango Tech were to come over here, or anyone who uses this for their own version of this game on their own server, as soon as they take out these items, it's going to actually trigger the despawn timer again. And so there's a slight chance that someone could throw in, let's say, their shulker box for storage. and It'll actually filter through the system. That's probably not a good thing. And this here is my compact design, which doesn't include despawn timers like this one over here. Instead, what I end up doing is having a locking hopper that will automatically unlock and take the item from that dropper as soon as the items stop flowing from this barrel to the bottom barrel below. Let me get you a demo of how this one works. So the hermit puts their coins in this for a bid. And when they press the button, the items flow through. And now the item is set again for them to submit something else. Now, what happens? Sometimes the hermits will put in a shulker box. They're playing deck inside the barrel. If for whatever reason, by accident, they press this button, well now their item is lost. So at that moment, what they would do is they would tell the admin of the game that their shulker box made it down through the system, and so then the admin would need to come down here into the bottom storage barrel, take the shulker box out, and then they can use this upside down stair trick to reach the barrel from below and deliver them back the shulker box. The other great thing about this access right here is that, let's say the bid is over and this particular player lost the bid. Tango Tech will be taking and keeping a few of those emeralds, and then what they'll do is he'll put the remaining emeralds back into the barrel up here. Pretty cool. Now, one thing with this particular system, is let's say by accident someone pressed this button. Well, now the system is going to be sitting in this state for a long time until something either gets put back into this particular barrel, which will then go down into the barrel below and reset the system, or the admin, if he sees this redstone lamp on, right? Light on, button pressed with no items. So to reset it, you need to press the top left button. And now it is primed and ready for more items. The way this works is when items come down through the hopper into the barrel, on the back side of the hopper, there's a comparator sitting on top of this hopper line here into this barrel. And what this does is the comparator will be read by the observer, which will then power the power rail and go into this observer train or this down on top of this particular sticky piston. The sticky piston for a brief moment will detract the redstone block, unpower this redstone dust. The sticky piston will drop down through a monostable circuit. But then when the observer reads the comparator as it's emptying, so it'll turn off now, the same exact thing will happen, but this time the redstone block will power this block 
through the corner through the monostable circuit just enough time to unpower this redstone torch and unlock this hopper to show you what it looks like let me press this button here and that brief blip of the redstone torch is all it needed to suck the item from here that was paused into this hopper and into the barrel to build this compact design you will need all the items that are in this chest. You'll need three barrels, three hoppers, three redstone lamps, three observers, and three comparators, and three redstone torches. Then you'll need two sticky pistons, two redstone repeaters, two buttons of any style, two powered rails. You'll need one dropper filled with as many items as you can fit in there. You'll need one redstone block, one redstone dust, and then up to nine building blocks, whichever style you want. And the first thing you'll need to do is have a three by five area cleared out. At the very top, what you're going to do first is put your redstone lamp in the back, followed by a barrel. And then on top of this particular redstone lamp, you're gonna put your button. You're gonna come down here to the bottom. And right here, you're gonna put your dropper filled with items facing down. You are going to then want to get a temporary block. And put that temporary block right here. You're going to take a hopper, point it into that block. Let's remove those. You are going to have another hopper underneath this barrel, followed by another barrel underneath that hopper. With this hopper, you're going to have a barrel at the bottom and a hopper pointing into it. The next step you, we're going to work on is this front comparator with a redstone lamp indicator to tell you when items are in this barrel. Just take a placer block, put it underneath the barrel, come out one, let's get rid of that block, take a comparator, put it on this block to read the contents of the barrel. All we need is a redstone lamp attached to this comparator. This is all set. So when items come in here, the redstone lamp turns on. Now, we are going to work on the system of locking this hopper until items are put in here and the button is pressed at the top. We're going to take a block and put it right next to this hopper to lock the hopper with the redstone torch. At the back over here, we are going to have a block here, here, followed by here, and lastly we're going to get a redstone lamp on the corner here. So this is the block placement you need on the corner over here. Now we need a comparator sitting on that block. To read the contents from this hopper, we need a repeater on this block, and now we need two redstone torches, one here to lock this hopper, and the other one is going to be right on the back side of here to turn on the lamp. So what happens is when there's items in here, the comparator reads it, which then powers this block, so it turns this light on, turns this redstone torch off, but turns this one on. So what that does is it unlocks this hopper, but at the same time, it powers this redstone lamp. We're almost done. So now we're going to work on the system right over here in the corner to unpower this redstone lamp. So while we're here, let's just put a redstone lamp here to lock this hopper. When this item gets shot out here, it's going to go into this and sit in this top hopper here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to have a block just behind this to read the contents from the hopper. We need a comparator sitting right here on this hopper. So when items are in this particular hopper, it's going to turn this comparator on. Now, in the corner, we want a sticky piston in the ground. Let's make sure we get that redstone dust in place. And now let's get this repeater set to three right there. And then on top of the sticky piston, let's get a any block of your choosing. Now, the next step is we need to get some observers, a sticky piston, two powered rails, and then one more block. And then this system is pretty much all done. So the first thing is, let's get the sticky piston in place. It's going to sit right behind this hopper right here. 
let's get some observers. And the observers are going to look like this. One coming off this comparator. One coming down here on the redstone lamp. And the other one, you have to sneak over here, coming right here from the backside of that observer to power this sticky piston. We are going to take a block, put it right here next, next to this observer. And now we're going to get some powered rails. The powered rails are going to go on top of this observer and on top of this block. Lastly, to prime the entire system, we need a redstone block. And we're going to put it right by shift clicking on this redstone dust. When you see this sticky piston up, this system is ready to go. Uh, lastly, what I'll do is the reset I have here, I'm just going to throw a button in this top left corner. So I'll throw any block of my choosing followed by a button on top of this. To see this work, if I click on this button, awesome. If someone presses the button by accident, yeah, this light is on, so I need to reset it. Very cool. I can come in here and I can submit all of my emeralds and coins for the auction item. Perfect. Let's try it one more time. All set. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had so much fun making this video. If you end up using it, please let me know. Write a comment down below. I want to hear your feedback, how well you like this. Well, anyway, have a great day, everyone.